So I'd like to introduce myself. My name's Mike Cowan. I'm the Managing Director of uh, Thermit Welding, which is part of the uh, Goldschmidt Group. Uh, Goldschmidt are uh, a supplier of uh, plant infrastructure and process uh, consumables on a global basis to the, uh, as of the rail industry all around the world. And today I'm here to talk specifically about uh, an innovation of, the, of uh, a very traditional process, the Thermit Welding process, which is uh, being developed in the UK. Uh, it's designed by the UK, will be manufactured in the UK, and is a, a UK innovation. So let's see if I can work this thing. Okay, so a brief overview of the presentation. Uh, the, I'll be uh, discussing the equipment, the process, uh, the, the properties of the, the resulting weld, uh, the applications, and uh, a conclusion. So the, the Smart Weld Ace, uh, the accelerated cooling equipment, is a purpose-designed cooling unit used to, to minimize the time to produce uh, an aluminothermic uh, weld in rail. Uh, this uh, is achieved through direct application of a fine water mist spray onto the uh, sheared weld uh, surface. So uh, an aluminothermic weld basically is uh, one of the ways of joining rail. So there's essentially three rail, three ways of, uh, of joining rail. And probably 99% of you in this audience well know the, the methods, but for anybody who doesn't, I'll very briefly summarize. Uh, you can uh, have a fish plate or an IRJ, insulated rail joint, a mechanical joint. You can have a, a, a heat uh, treatment such as flash butt or uh, uh, flame um, gas uh, heating or, or now potentially uh, even induction welding. And the, the third method is to literally drop a, a weld into the, uh, drop a, uh, sorry, drop a, uh, a casting into the rail, which is the aluminothermic process. So this is a very old established uh, process. It's been uh, used in the rail industry, uh, developed over 100 years ago. There's countless hundreds of thousands, if not millions of uh, uh, aluminothermic welds out there. It's uh, a very robust uh, process, uh, relatively easy to carry out with uh, good reliability in all kinds of uh, weather conditions, and it's a, a good, solid, reliable process. Uh, basically, it uh, relies on the, the reaction between uh, aluminium and uh, iron oxide to produce uh, uh, iron and uh, aluminium oxide. This is an exothermic reaction which uh, uh, heats the, uh, the, uh, the metal up to temperatures uh, over uh, 3,000 degrees C, which, to put it in perspective, is half the temperature of the uh, surface of the sun. So it's a, uh, a very aggressive uh, type reaction, produces lots of heat, uh, the, the output of which is uh, uh, steel, which goes into the rail to form the, the casting, and the aluminum oxide, which, which uh, basically just uh, runs off. So, as I say, it's a, it has some uh, real advantages, uh, which is why it's been such a, a well-received and, um, uh, what would you say, a long-standing process. So, uh, not only is it very reliable, but it also is very forgiving of uh, differences in the cross-section, for example, between uh, rail types. So, one of the big advantages of a casting is if you have uh, worn rail and you, uh, you are connecting it to uh, new rail, uh, obviously, the head of the rail needs to be uh, level or the, the journey won't be very pleasant for anybody, which means that the foot of the rails are at, at different heights. So because the, uh, you've got a casting, it basically naturally bridges the, uh, the difference in the, the, the rail foot uh, between uh, old and uh, new rail. And also, if you're welding different, uh, joining up different uh, rail types, it's very forgiving of that. So. As a process, it's a very robust, reliable process, but one of the issues uh, with uh, our thermo uh, uh, uh welding is you do have all this heat, and that has been uh, basically a bit of an, uh, an Achilles heel of the process from uh, uh, the, the, the first time it was introduced. The grinding of a, a weld once the uh, casting has been made can't take place until the uh, the temperature cools down below about 400 degrees C. Uh, if uh, grinding is attempted before this temperature, then what happens is when it cools, the, the head of the weld dips, which um, is, is basically just not allowed by uh, network rail for obvious uh, reasons. It would lead to a, a very poor uh, journey and ultimately to a premature failure of the, of the weld. 
So we've developed a process which basically uh, force cools the, the, the well, but this isn't as uh, simple as it would seem because there's a lot of uh, uh, interesting chemistry goes on in a, in a weld as it's, uh, it's cooling down. So uh, the, the cooling needs to be uh, very, uh, what would you say, very well controlled. So uh, this, uh, these pictures uh, show different, uh, the microstructure for, uh, for different uh, cooling rates. Uh, so it's, it's really important to control the, the cooling rate of the weld. Uh, too high a cooling rate will actually result in uh, a weld which has uh, martensite. Now martensite is a, a crystalline structure of, uh, of steel in a, in a weld. Now it's great if you uh, have a knife, it's a very, very hard substance, but if you, um, if you have it in a rail joint, it's a very bad thing to have. It can lead to uh, cracks in the, the weld. So what you need in a, uh, in a weld, uh, in a, a rail joint, is actually a pearlitic structure which uh, requires a, a much more controlled, uh, a slower uh, cooling rate. So in this example, cooling down from, uh, uh, this is done on a, an R260 uh, rail grate. In this example, uh, at a, a 3.5 uh, degree C for temperature uh, gradient, we see no martensite. However, uh, what we found was that the the cooling rate and the initial start temperature are, are really critical to uh, avoiding the formation of uh, martensite. So we, uh, we used a delometer, uh, de delatometer to uh, actually accurately control the, uh, the, the cooling of the, the rail so that we could uh, determine exactly what the, the critical cooling rate we could uh, get away with. And uh, starting from a higher temperature of 1300 degrees C, which is more typical for uh, an aluminothermic weld, we found that uh, a cooling rate of uh, around two degrees C was uh, was what we really, <coughs> excuse me, required in order to avoid martensite formation. So we elected to uh, uh, we selected a, a cooling rate of uh, around 1.6 uh, degrees C per per second, which gives a a good cooling rate, but also gives a, uh, a, a very good safety margin. So there's absolutely no uh, danger of the, the formation of martensite. If, it, as I say, that would be a really bad thing. Martensite would lead to uh, premature failure. So the equipment we use to do this is the, uh, consists of the ACE, which is a control box, which contains a, a small computer control unit and a, a pump, uh, and a couple of heads. So we we have the standard head, which is used for uh, joining rail, and we have uh, another head, which is used for uh, head repair weld. So the system can be used not just for, um, uh, for bonding uh, rail together, but can also be used for uh, situations where there's damage to the, uh, the head of a rail. And rather than having to cut the whole section out and put new rail in, you can actually just scoop the damaged section out and uh, and put a, a small uh, repair weld into the head of the rail. So the, the ACE the, is, uh, is actually certified for, and approved for use on network rail and uh, TFL uh, today. So what is the actual process? So for a standard rail join, 5.5 uh, minutes after the, uh, the weld pour, you can, uh, you can trim the, the excess material off the, the rail. Um, uh, eight minutes um, after the, the initial weld pour, you begin the, uh, the ACE cooling. So you switch the ACE unit on, and it, uh, it begins cooling. So if I can show this. So this, uh, this graph here shows uh, our standard cooling. So uh, this is the initial temperature of the weld here. You can see uh, uh, up, reaching up to around 1400 degrees C. And this blue line here shows the, the natural cooling rate. Uh, here we can see after eight minutes after the weld pour when the ACE is switched on, uh, you can see this very rapid cooling which brings you down to the 400 degree C point at which you can, it's safe to grind the weld uh, much more quickly than uh, you know, would be achieved using uh, uh, air cooling. Yeah, so at eight minutes after uh, starting the ACE, the weld is, uh, is basically now at temperature where um, uh, where the uh, normal grinding can uh, take place and tensors, if fitted, uh, can uh, technically be removed at this point because uh, the, the weld is now basically 
are cold as far as the steel is concerned. So that gives a total time saving per weld of 15 minutes for a single weld or 30 minutes for a, uh, a dual weld uh, closure rail. So the head repair weld process. So for a head repair, there's a smaller amount of steel in the rail. So we adopt a, a slightly different uh, approach with uh, a head repair weld. What we do is we allow the, uh, the, the rail to, uh, to cool naturally until it's passed through the pearlite formation phase. So this is a little bit technical, this graph, but uh, basically uh, what this graph shows is this uh, axis here is uh, time on a logarithmic scale. Uh, this is temperature. And the red line shows the, uh, the point at which uh, uh, martensite would form. So uh, this, uh, to, the left of the, to the left of the red line, is uh, more rapid cooling, starting at uh, 20 degrees C per second. And you can see in this region here, uh, you would always have lots of martensite formation, which is a, a bad thing. Uh, to the right of this line, where we have uh, more slower cooling, uh, this is where the uh, pearlite formation takes place. And in terms of reducing temperature, uh, you can see this uh, blue band uh, across here. That shows the, the region when the pearlite formation would be uh, complete. So for, a, 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 for the standard rail joining, what we do is we have a, a controlled uh, cooling which follows this line down here, which is uh, approximately 1.6 degrees C per second. And we, we follow that all the way down, basically. For the head repair weld, what we do is, because it's a, a much smaller amount of uh, steel, we allow that just to naturally cool until it reaches the paralytic transformations phase. And then we basically douse it, which is a much higher rate of uh, water, which brings it down uh, cooling uh, uh, much more rapidly. So rapid water quenching is applied after the pearlite transformation is, uh, is complete. Uh, and uh, that just says basically pearlite formations complete roughly around 650 degrees C. So what is the process? So for a head repair weld, six and a half minutes after completion of the weld pour, uh, uh, we would trim the, uh, the weld as usual. Uh, 18 minutes after completion of the weld pour and after completion of the weld trimming, uh, we start the ACE cooling. Two minutes later, the weld is at 70 degrees C and can be uh, uh, ground as, uh, as usual. So for a head repair weld, the, the time saving is quite remarkable. We go from a 50 minute natural cooling to uh, a time saving of uh, a 30, 30 minutes. So it really is a, a, a real productivity improvement. So what, uh, what is the subsequent uh, weld? Uh, what does it look like in terms of its uh, properties? Well, basically, there's almost uh, no difference between uh, an accelerated cooled weld and a standard one. So on, uh, on this graph, we can see the, uh, the, the blue dots show the, uh, the this is cross-section of the, uh, the weld with the center of the weld being in the, the center of the graph. Oops. So the center of the, the weld is here. Uh, this would be normal rail over here, this would be rail over here, and this shows the, uh, the hardness of the rail as we go from one rail transition through the well to the other side. And what we can see is uh, the, the, the blue dots here, the, the slightly lower ones. This is the hardness of the, uh, the rail in the, uh, in the center of the weld. Uh, the black dots show the, the hardness of the, the rail with uh, an accelerated uh, cooling. So they, they, they pretty much follow uh, the same, apart from there's a slightly uh, harder hardness of the, the rail with the accelerated uh, cooling. And this is just due to uh, the, uh, the way the pearlite is formed, but it's still pearlite, and it, it's actually slightly uh, advantageous uh, in that you can see that the, uh, the, the accelerated cooled weld actually has a central weld hardness, which is uh, uh, more similar to the uh, uh, to the, the hardness of the, uh, the rail either side. So no changes in hardness in the critical, <coughs> excuse me, critical heat affected zone, which is the re region either side of the, uh, the, the rail. And basically the tests show good consistency in hardness between the, the trials carried out in both the laboratory and the, the field. And the, there have been extensive, uh, as part of our product approval process, there were extensive uh, trials carried out at multiple sites uh, up and down the, the country in order to, to verify the process 
uh, was uh, robust and, and reliable. So uh, where can it be used? So for standard uh, gap welds, we, uh, the, the, the product is authorized for use on R260 and uh, R220 uh, grade steel uh, for profile 60E1, 56E1, and uh, 95 bullhead. Uh, for the head repair weld, pretty much the same. Uh, with the addition that the, the process is also approved for use on uh, R350 heat-treated uh, uh, rail. So, in, in conclusion, a, a, water, a water mist spray uh, cooling system has been developed that uh, has proven efficient in increasing productivity, uh, no detrimental mechanical properties, and uh, as it says uh, here, uh, a modest, uh, a modest uh, increase in, uh, in hardness could be regarded as actually potentially uh, beneficial uh, to service performance. Uh, retention of uh, paleolithic based uh, microstructures, uh, robust uh, with uh, high consistency and repeatability. And uh, the only downside presently only to be used with uh, non-premium rail grades. For the head repair, which is uh, we think will be extremely uh, popular within network rail, because it, uh, it, it will allow network rail to, uh, to, to solve uh, problems with uh, surface defects much more rapidly than the, uh, the, the previously available uh, technologies. Uh, it has all of the advantages for the, the rail joining process, uh, additional time savings, and uh, an ability to be used on, uh, on some uh, premium grades. That's it. Thank you.